Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we kick off with a story in the geopolitics of AI. If you've been listening to this show for any amount of time, you will know that one of the really interesting things about artificial intelligence right now is that it is not just a cool new technology that some businesses are adopting and consumers are talking about. It is something that is being seen as a key geostrategic imperative. AI is, for example, having huge impact on U.S. policy vis-a-vis China, and by extension, U.S. policy in the Middle East. Well, interestingly, OpenAI has just reported that a number of different states have been using AI for fairly nefarious purposes. The New York Times reports OpenAI says Russia and China used its AI in covert campaigns. TLDR, OpenAI announced on Thursday that it had identified five different online campaigns that had used its tools to, quote, deceptively manipulate public opinion and influence geopolitics. These efforts were run by both private companies as well as state actors connected to Russia, China, Iran, and Israel. So what were they doing? Well, they were using OpenAI to generate social media posts, translate and edit articles, write headlines, basically to create propaganda in so many words. This will probably not be surprising to any of you. This seems like an obvious use case for someone who's engaged in a propaganda effort, which is, of course, as old as time. But as The Times points out, OpenAI's report is the first time that a major AI company has revealed how its specific tools were used for such online deception. One of the interesting things, though, is that the report also suggests that people are just still sort of fumbling around with it. Said Ben Nimmo, a principal investigator for OpenAI, while the campaigns were used to post political content... OpenAI had a hard time figuring out if they were trying to target specific elections or more just generally about getting people all riled up. He also noted that they hadn't been very effective. Said Nimmo, these influence operations still struggle to build an audience. So what are some of the examples? In one case, a campaign used OpenAI tech to generate anti-Ukraine comments and then translate them into English, French, German, Italian, and Polish. In another case, they were used to translate and edit articles supporting Russia in the war in Ukraine. They were also used to convert anti-Ukraine articles into Facebook posts. In a different campaign, people in the Ukraine, Moldova, Baltic states, and the United States were targeted via Telegram, focusing once again on the war in Ukraine. Writes the Times, the political comments received few replies and likes, and the efforts were also unsophisticated at times. At one point, the campaign posted text that had obviously been generated by AI. Said one post, as an AI language model, I am here to assist and provide the desired comment. The report also talked about how China sought advice on how to analyze social media and research current events as well as to generate social media posts that disparaged people who had been critical of the CCP. Iran used ChatGPT to translate long-form articles that were aimed to spread pro-Iranian, anti-Israel, and anti-U.S. sentiment. Our allies were at it as well, though. For example, an Israeli firm that manages political campaigns used ChatGPT to generate fictional personas and biographies that were used in Israel, Canada, and the United States to post anti-Islamic content. Ultimately, the report was sort of a mixed bag. It showed that a thing that people have been worried about, which is AI-enabled influence operations, are definitely happening but they're not really sophisticated yet. I don't think that that will necessarily make anyone feel more comfortable, given that ultimately, if this is just a learning curve issue, as well as a technological capacity issue, both of those things are likely to get nothing but better in the time to come. I mentioned at the top of the show the way that AI is influencing U.S. foreign policy and how it's expanding from China to the Middle East. Bloomberg recently published a piece called U.S. is slowing AI chip exports to Middle East by NVIDIA and AMD. So one of the things that's happened over the last couple years is in addition to chip export restrictions targeted at China, some of those same chip restrictions have found their way to the Middle East. That's not necessarily because the U.S. is concerned about rogue Gulf states or anything like that having access to AI technology, but that they're concerned that it could be a backdoor way for China to get access to the technology through their relationships in the region. Because of that, they've been in a licensing regime, and apparently the issuing of licenses has slowed down significantly. Apparently, there is a national security review of AI development in the Gulf region going on right now. Writes Bloomberg, it's unclear how long the review will take, nor is there a concrete definition of what constitutes a large shipment. Officials are particularly focused on high-volume sales, as countries including the UAE and Saudi Arabia look to import massive quantities of the chips used in AI data centers. Bloomberg continues, U.S. officials have delayed or not responded to license applications in the past several weeks. That includes attempts to sell to customers in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, according to a source. Maybe the best example of the U.S.'s growing focus on this area came in April, when the Department of Commerce facilitated a $1.5 billion investment from Microsoft into Abu Dhabi-based G42. G42 had been at the very epicenter of this concern around the Middle East playing both the Chinese and U.S. sides of the AI equation, and had come under increasing pressure to pick a side. Towards the end of last year, G42 started to basically say that they couldn't remain neutral and they had to pick a side and that they were going to pick the U.S., and this minority investment seems to have been part and parcel of that. In other words, it feels like a way to give Microsoft, a U.S. corporation, access to G42's books, which is probably, frankly, a way for the U.S. government to keep tabs on what G42 is doing. 
It's not just the U.S.-China Middle East access that has AI at the center of its politics, though. CNBC this morning published a piece called France is Aiming to Become a Global AI Superpower. The article talks about how France has produced a number of big, high-profile AI companies, including Mistral, as well as the firm H, which recently raised a $220 million seed funding round. But even with this, it shows just how integrated U.S.-based big tech companies are into the entire world. We just talked about that G42 deal, which again was facilitated by the Department of Commerce. But these big tech companies also are making major investments in places like France. Microsoft, for example, committed 4 billion euros into the country. Said French finance minister Bruno Le Maire, France is the leader on artificial intelligence in Europe. And he also tried to clarify that while they wanted to work with U.S. tech companies, they, quote, want to have our own artificial intelligence being created and being developed in France. For example, as to the Microsoft deal, he said Microsoft is much welcome in our country, but the challenge for us is to have our own devices, our own scientists, and we are working very hard for that. French President Emmanuel Macron put his ambitions for his country in global terms. He said it's insane to have a world where the big giants just come from China and the U.S. Finally, there is, of course, another dimension to this as well, which is the military and defense dimension. The U.S. Army is no stranger to AI, and just this week, Palantir announced new nearly half-billion-dollar deal from the Pentagon for an AI-powered intelligence platform. Said Shannon Clark, Palantir's head of defense growth, this is taking what has been built in prototype and experimentation and bringing this to production. Users are going to span everyone from intel analysts and operators in some of the remote island chains across the world to leadership at the Pentagon. The system is called the Maven Smart System, which started deploying as a prototype back in 2021. Writes Defense One, the prototype will focus on key areas like battle space awareness, global integration, contested logistics, joint fires, and targeting. For example, Maven is able to aggregate data on U.S. forces locations from hundreds of sources into a digital map that leaders can use. Describing the difference between this and what they have now, Palantir's enterprise defense lead Andrew Locke said, Typically how this is handled is through static update briefs, typically PowerPoint on a 12 or 24 hour cadence. This actually becomes challenging for a leader to be able to either visualize, describe, or provide direction to forces when information is either outdated or they can't actually see it in a synthesized manner. So tons going on in the world of AI and geopolitics, but for now that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.